Hey, welcome to another episode of the Stupid CS Guy. We are talking about the Dynamo paper. The Dynamo paper, like I said, is a paper that was presented in around 2007. And it is a basis of many databases that we use today, like Cassandra, React, Voldemort, and so on. Just to recap, we spoke about the Dynamo instances. As you can see, this diagram in the Dynamo paper is you have the client requests coming into the page rendering components, which renders the actual UI pages and whatnot. And then they make calls into the API layer, which is like, which has a request routing and goes to the aggregator services. And finally goes to the services which house the real business logic. So this is like, think of it like, you know, check out, check out service, maybe order service, maybe something like recommendation service and blah, 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 and so on. And each of them have their own separate Dynamo instances. Yeah, it is not one Dynamo instance for the entire company. And before we go to the next part, just to recap, the key principles were incremental scalability, which was easily being able to scale symmetry. Every node in Dynamo having the same responsibilities. Decentralization, if one system goes down, it should not affect the entire uh, you know, Dynamo system. And heterogeneity, where each of these boxes or each of these hosts can look very different so with that in mind let's go to our next section which is where we will talk about database architectures but but before we go let me just spend some time on some of the concepts that we will need let's start with our traditional model uh, when this paper came out so we had some of these architectures during that time so you have the application and you have the database so and if this uh, database went down, the entire application would go down. And the only way to scale is vertical scaling. Remember vertical scaling means adding more memory or adding more RAM or processing, processing capacity to the same machine. Vertical scaling becomes costly the more and more you scale up. That means if this was 16 GB RAM and you, you started getting more traffic, you would have to scale up to 32, which is still fine. Then you'll have to go to 64 and then you'll keep increasing. And at some point you will hit the limit of what the RAM capabilities are. So that's the vertical scaling part. And of course th there is no redundancy and what. So folks realized that, that there is a problem with that architecture and folks saw that, Hey, why can't we do a master slave architecture? So you have a master and so you say, Hey, there's uh, one more. So you call this primary and this is called secondary. Your primary is the one that serves your write request new secondary serve the read requests. Uh, you still have the same problems for write, but your reads can be spread across both. And there would be some like replication lag. So, so the way it will work is you'll have some amount of replication lag here. So secondary will always be replicating of the primary. If your primary goes down, you start reading of the secondary, but you don't write into that. Next comes is your master master architecture. So where both these databases are both the database hosts have the master copy of each other so now that means that this database hosts talk to this guy for replication of whatever was stored in the in master one and the master two talks talks to master one to replicate so it's a, it does replication both sides now when you do some of the when you have master 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 architecture that means you can have conflicts and that's something that we will talk about in, in some of the later videos just remember that with with each of those you have trade off with the first one of course it's simple but there is no disaster recovery if one instance of the database host dies and you are you're pretty much the application comes to a stop second one was primary secondary where you have write database and one for read replica uh, so that makes your read scalable you can scale out your reads but you have the same problem with your writes where your writes need to be only vertically scaled and not horizontally scaled because that is the source of truth. And the third one is the master master where both of them are primary. That means you can, your writes can go into either of it, but then their replication has to be super fast. And there is a case where you can have conflicts because you have the same document or the same key value pair. And let's say, which is stored in both of these masters and some one machine edits the one in master one and the other machines go and edits in master two. So how do you do a conflict resolution of the data? That's the overall view. So now I come to my favorite topic, which is of course, cap theorem. Cap theorem stands for, C stands for, of course, consistency. A stands for availability. And P stands for partitioning. Let's say you have the same database replicated in India and in US. 
Any big database, of course, would need to be replicated. It might be that this drawing is replicated in US, was created, and it was also replicated in India. So folks in India would work off this instance, and in, folks in US would work off this instance. And the way it would happen, it's a master-master concept. So you'll, you will have you, India and US reading out right off. It could be master, it could be master uh, slave, or sec primary, secondary. It doesn't really matter, but let's let's look at this. So first, uh, somebody makes a change to the drawing, it goes into US. So you have users sending traffic here, and then you also have users sending traffic here. Right now, let's come to the P. What happens if there is a network partition? When I say network partition, let's say the cable between India and US, the underwater sea cable gets cut. So this is no longer happening. So there, um, so there is a cut now. So there, let's say the cable, undersea cable is no longer operating and so there is a cut. But the databases are up, by the way. So what do you do in this case? And I, like I said, CAP theorem is only applied to distributed systems. It is not applied to if it's in the same box. So like I said, so you have two options here, right? You can say that, hey, I can bring down the entire system. So I can say, hey, India and US is not, you know, talking to each other. So I am going to bring down the entire system. So let's say your entire uh, this, this diagram or entire Twitter is gone gone because India and US had a cable cut. So that, that means you are trading off availability for consistency, right? So this, this system that you see here is a CP system. Why it's a CP system? Because of course it's not available. In case of a network partition, in this case, you are still prioritizing consistency. Both the database are exactly consistent, but you do not have availability. Now, let's say what are your other choices? Your other choices is, hey, I don't know. Uh, sure, India and US are not communicating each other, but I'll still keep functioning of them. That means your India database and US database might start looking different and they are no longer consistent. A, a person in US might see a different version of this drawing and person in India might see the same drawing have a different version. And at some point when this gets fixed, they will start communicating again, right? This means it is eventually consistent. And what you have traded off is you have made it traded off consistency for availability. So that is an AP system. So an AP system is uh, an availability and, and a partition system. So yeah. So what, does, what is an AP system? So an AP system is a system which is available when a network partition happens and that is an highly available system so generally when anybody tells you to design a highly available system you would look for an ap system and not a cp system now that we know about all these basic concepts we'll go into the actual dynamo paper so if you go into the dynamo paper it it talks about all of these topics and each we will cover each of those topics so we'll cover the next one we'll cover about partitioning we'll where we'll talk about consistent uh, hatching that is how they achieve incremental scalability that means that is how they make it very easy to add new hosts into the dynamo network high availability again if somebody tells you to design how how do you have high availability for rights the technique that they use is vector clocks for reconciliation. I'll, I'll talk about that here because high availability means that you will have a master master model where there would be conflicts. And how would they res resolve those conflicts is through vector clocks. Then is the temporary failures. Of course, you don't want your system to have an outage for small failures or a, or a node restart. And that is where, you know, sloppy quorum and hinted handoff comes in. Then there is recovering from permanent failures, whether your, your host goes for a toss. That means you need replication, you need some sort of replication and you have to be super fast about that. And that is where we will talk about anti-entropy Merkle trees. And then finally, like I said, we do not want a system where you have one person having a, some, some special role or keeping some special amount of data. And if that goes for a toss, every, your entire system down. That is why the membership and all of these configurations that we will have is stored in the nodes itself and the way it is done is through a gossip based membership protocol and failure detection and we'll talk about that how the system the this 
gossip based protocol gives symmetry and avoids having a centralized registry for storing membership and node liveness information with that we'll see you in the next video